Honey. All right. On to other health news now. Some scientists believe that stem cells from embryos hold the promise to find the cures for some of life's most crippling diseases, like Parkinson's disease and cancer. The White House has moral obligations, moral objections, I should say, saying that embryonic stem cell research destroys human life. But what if? What if you didn't need an embryo? What if there was an alternative methods to get stem cells? House Meisner is a scientist at the Whitehead Institute for Biomedical Research, and he may have found a new way that could address all those issues. And he joins us from our CNA studio in Boston this morning. Good morning, Alex. How are you? Good morning, Greg. I'm very well. Thank Good. You. Let's talk about the uh, set the stage now for our viewers who are watching. Uh, explain. Um, uh, the process of embryonic stem cell research, why it is shows so much problems, and why it has also caused so much controversy. So embryonic stem cells are cells that have been derived from a very early stage embryo, and they still maintain the potential to generate every single um, cell in the human body. And therefore, they have a great potential to be used for um, therapeutic purposes. But there's also moral objections, of course, from the president and many of people who believe in them that this is also perhaps uh, not the type of research that they want to conduct. And they've frozen some of the federal funding for that, right? Exactly, because as I said, the problem is that you have to, at the moment, you have to derive these cells from a very early stage embryo. And in order to get these cells, this embryo has to be destroyed. Okay, you've come up with a new way to harvest stem cells from mice and uh, using embryonic cells there, but in a way that does not, in a way that eliminates the possibility of cloning. Tell our viewers about that. It's actually a little bit different. So um, when you, ha you, you want to have stem cells um, to treat a patient, you want to have these cells from that specific patient. And these so-called customized embryonic stem cells are currently derived by a procedure that um, is called nuclear transfer or cloning. And in our procedure, we have modified this a little bit so that you take away um, from this embryo the potential to ever develop into a um, functional um, embryo. We're looking at now another full screen as we show of how you do it. Exactly what is the process? What do you do? You take stem cells or you remove... Uh, so we, we, ta we take in a procedure um, called nuclear transfer. You we take a skin cell, introduce this into a nucleated oocyte, and before we do this procedure, we take away a gene that is required for the development of the embryo and the placenta. However, this um, gene is not required for the um, development of stem cells. So you can generate these stem cells without ever destroying an embryo. What promise does your research have? What promise does it show for those people who are waiting for some type of potential medical cure? Well, it's not a direct promise for these people at this stage. It is just, um, it shows a, a scientific way of getting around some of the moral objections that people will have because you will never, um, you're not, no longer going to destroy an embryo because, um, again, our procedure um, um, takes away the potential to develop into an embryo. Okay. The reviews and comments from groups who oppose and support your research are mixed. Uh, many of them have said that this answers more questions, uh, raises more questions than it answers. Some people who oppose embryonic stem cell research are fascinated by it and want to see it, while others say it is still uh, goes down that path that they don't want. Why the mixed reviews, do you think? Well, again, it's a big ethical debate at the moment, and um, exactly what science is supposed to do is, is stimulate this debate and um, raise more questions than answers. So in this case, um, we just provide a scientific basis for the ongoing debate, and um, we'll see where this goes in the future. As a scientist, what are you hoping, what do you think that your type of research can provide? What do you think that it can do for those viewers who are watching now who know or have or have family members suffering from Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, cancer? Well, again, stem cells can be used at some point uh, that, um, to regenerate all kinds of tissues again. Uh, you could generate from a stem cell, you could derive neurons and replace um, lost neurons and diseases like Parkinson's. And therefore, there's great hope for that. Um, and our procedure, again, is just a um, modification um, of the current technology and would allow to derive these stem cell lines in a more ethical way. And is it, you, you think that your research uh, addresses the big ethical question that many people have about stem cell research, about embryonic stem cell research? I think it will be very, help, very helpful for the discussion and it will show um, 
that there might be alternative ways to generate these embryonic stem cell lines without um, destroying embryos. All right. Uh, Alex Meisner, he's a scientist at the uh, Whitehead Institute for Medical Research, joining us from Boston this morning, our CNA studio in Boston. We want to thank you very much for talking to us, and we hope to see and hear more about your research and how it develops. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Tom? It is interesting. Well, he shows you that he loves you with his fists, but do you know how to take action to get out of that abusive relationship? We'll have some uh, advice on that coming up in just a few minutes. But first, the death toll could climb to more than 50,000 in Southeast Asia following last week's